the Republic for which his hands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay. We are again being broadcast live over Xavier TV and also on YouTube. And um, now let's start with the uh, board. Clerk Wright, would you please call the roll? Trustee Gordon? Here. Trustee Miller? Here. Trustee Martin? Yes, excuse. Thank you, Frazier. Here. Senator Bud. Here. Clerk of Silence, Supervisor. Here. We have a form. Thank you very much. Um, executive summary of the agenda. Uh, we are going to be having a presentation on the state of the township address. And what else do I got here? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, so much stuff. Uh, we, have, uh, we also we also are going to be doing uh, buying a couple of Dell servers, which we buy every couple of years. We have to buy from Dell, so it's on the consent agenda. We have the reappointments of Norm DeBuck and Tony Gibson to the Environmental Commission. Thank you very much, Norm and Tony. There will be a public hearing to hear comments on the 2022 amended and the proposed budgets for 2023. There will also be new business will include discussions on a personal service contract with Blake Worthy for the position of desktop technician and discussion on, a, on the title change and job description from public administrative assistant to public safety administrator for Casey Schmetke. There'll be a first reading of an ordinance to rezone some property on Sumter Road uh, and discussion of the purchase of an F-150. Uh, for the water fleet in discussion of a land donation of a parcel uh, of vacant property on Tyler Road for Mark and Jonathan Lopatin. Lopatin. That's it. <laughs> Moving forward, can I get a motion to adopt the agenda? Can I make a motion we approve the agenda as presented? Then there's a motion going to. Do you support? Yes. I have a motion. I have support. Hearing all in favor? Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> the motion passes. <clears throat> Can I get adopted the consent agenda? I think it's, 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 it's Mr. Boynton. Sure. I move that we grant approval for one board minute meetings of October 4th, 2022, the prepaid <clears throat> list of October 6th and October 13th. The voucher list of October 18th, all of 2022. Approval of the purchase of two Dell servers and disk storage array to replace current devices that are reaching the end of their life cycle. Approval of the 2022 dash. Uh, yeah, number six. Yeah. Striking yeah. <coughs> number six. Um, and approval of the reappointment of Norm DeBuck and Tony Gibson to the Environmental Commission for the term to expire on October 1st of 2025. Support. I have a motion. I have support. Hearing all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Motion passes. We're now to public hearing. Uh, can I let you take a motion to go into public hearing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Can I get a motion to go to public hearing? I'll make that motion to go into public hearing. Supported. Okay. Now we got pretty sure of it. All right. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're now in public hearing. Um, this is a public hearing for the 2022 2023 budget. If anybody came to speak on the budget for 2023, um, welcome to come up now. Okay. I don't see anybody, so I'll ask for a motion to go out of public hearing. I'll so make that motion. Miller? Support. I think that points in our in there. <laughs> okay, so um, all in favor of going out? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Correspondence announcements and presentations. I'll do a couple real quick. First one is Candy Loop. Candy Loop. Candy Loop is Saturday. Big deal. It's not coming there. It's like a thousand kids that are going to come out. The line moves quick. Uh, I'll be out there handing out candy. I think most of the elected officials are going to be out, out handing out candy. 
It's a lot of fun. Fire trucks will be there. Hot cars will be there. Lots of people dressed up. It's from four to six in Cork Park, Candy Loop, October twenty second, four to six at Cork Park. I um, I've got a lot of letters, and I got three letters. We sent our officers off to be trained in how to deal with people with behavioral disabilities, and. Um, Normally, when you when a cop shows up at a place and they've got somebody acting crazy and jumping around, it, it, it doesn't go well. Um, I've got three letters now, and we put these into the into the uh, officers' uh, uh, thing about the difference that these families and these these residents are, are dealing with, and the way the, these the officers come and they're professional. Uh, they changed my whole outlook on the police. This is from one of the residents that actually was uh, uh, called to them. Another one said that basically they, they've been dealing with police their whole life because of their child, and they've never dealt with a, 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 a bureau police officer, and they couldn't believe how professional on how they calmed the scene down. I'm getting this more and more. This is, um, oh God, I wish I could remember all the names of them that were in here. I got a uh, Monroe resident that wrote that she had a problem on Belver Road, and, 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 and an officer helped her out. <clears throat> officers Barry and Officers Evans uh, were two others that were dealing with, with some of these, these people. We've got wonderful cops. They took a lot of training, and I'm very thankful and thankful for uh, Jason Wright, who has embraced this ARG, and our Deputy Josh uh, Monte, who's embraced this. And thank you very much for that. It's just amazing. Right, yeah. Yes, it is. Um, does he does have a, a, a yeah, I got to But since we, <clears throat> we're going to be closed on the election day, November, and we and we don't have a board member for the, the board meeting for the first weekend, for the first uh, second weekend, uh, first weekend of, in November. So I need to announce that we were going to be closed on uh, that Thursday. I believe that Thursday, November 10th, we're going to serve as Veterans Day because we're going to call on Friday then. I believe that's how it works out. Am I right, Aka? Yes, you're right. You are 100% correct, but right. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Karen, is there anybody else on the Lapotans here? I thought that was you. Not just Jeff, though. No, I, I haven't seen. I'm trying to get a hold of him. He's right there. Is he going? Oh, he did. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, he snuck in behind me. I thought we were gonna. They're they're uh, a new business item, so I thought we were gonna. Okay, but we're gonna. I want to move them to number one. Then on the new business item, are they already there? Okay, thank you. All right. So on the presentation, we have the uh, the state of the community address. We did live. Um, sorry, got quite a few views out of the public. Um, and I want to thank um, that was here. He did a spectacular job. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Go ahead and key it up. All right, sounds good. We've long talked about the fact that we're trying to build a premier community. We'll build a premier community on your own. You do it with the interactions of the board, the two of the chairs, and then points in direction. You do it with directors that are all going in the same direction. And when you have everybody working together like there's a special community happens, and you stop building a premier community and you start becoming the end of the township, it's no longer building a premier community, it is becoming a premier I'm so very proud of all the wonderful colleagues that I have working with me to make this happen. So the question became six years ago, how do you become a premier community? Well, first of all, we have to look internally at our buildings and our equipment and everything else. And quite frankly, it was all running on 20, 25 years old. We had equipment that barely was on the road their fire trucks were hanging on by a thread they were in the shop more than they were on the road we just had a real mess here the, the administration building was falling apart the building the Belleville museum was on its last legs 
Uh, the police department was in trouble. It was so bad that we couldn't even make a plan for it. We just had to start attacking one building at a time. And we did that for five or six years. Well, now we're at the point where we can start maturing and taking care of problems ahead of time. We can start maintaining our We've set up funds for the big items like fire trucks that constantly replenish themselves so the fire truck does go down in the next five or six years. There'll be money already in the fund to buy it. In 2017, there was a hard look at the fleet and we were falling behind in replacement of the vehicles. So a plan was put in place where every year there's a hundred thousand dollars to put away for the uh, equipment replacement for the apparatus, specifically the engines and the ladder truck. And having that reliability and safety that the firefighters know the equipment's going to work for them takes uh, one of those things they have to worry about when they're on the scene trying to fire. So the blend rate program, which we did away with, uh, incorporated police officers, one ordinance officer, and at one time even me when I was an island dispatcher. And what it was was to help fill the gaps in the fire department because the pay on call system wasn't working. Uh, with the board this year, they came up with a solution. We were able to uh, sunset that program. So I was able to improve the service for the fire department, the reliability of the scheduling, and also give a well-deserved break to those who put in a lot of time over the year. In law enforcement, the gold standard of meeting a mere standard in the state of Michigan is the Michigan Association of Police Accreditation. I would like to then also note that the Michigan Man of Jane Township Police Department to the Michigan Law Enforcement Accreditation Commission for full accredited status. Accreditation means that you're going to carry it in your police force now and in the future, and it will constantly improve. I want to have a mere community. You have to have a baseline and as well as several very different auditors that are already to determine if what you're doing is correct, if what you're doing is the standard, and what you're doing is the mirror. What that took was every member of the department had to work on this. And we all had to, we all had a little part in doing this there. And by doing that, it has made us much better, it has made us much more consistent. And it created a culture here of bringing us all together for a conference. There's other ways where we're investing in the community, things that people don't see. We are not one of the very few communities in the country that have surrounded its perimeter with a block camera system. The black safety system is a tremendous asset to us in law enforcement. This is really a game changer for us. But what this camera does, it gives us a tool that will point us in the right direction of where a vehicle may have been that was involved in the crime or is, is wanted. The safety of the township is not taken away from the Bible Police Department or the Fire Department. And we are doing our absolute best to obtain the most up to date training education. Anything that will make us do the job better and keep us compliant with the law and also reduce liability, that's what we're doing. So for right now, we've completed most of the infrastructure of our administrative fire and police. We are now working on the parks. When residents or visitors come to our parks, they'll notice a few new improvements from last year. Um, one of those are park signs. So we completed phase one this year, which was four new monument signs in our parks. That was at Riggs Park, French Landing, Van Buren Park, and Court Park. Later this fall, we'll be installing over 40 new interior park signs that help provide information and also directional signage for visitors. At French Landing Park, last year we started with phase one of our construction. We renovated the park. We added new pathways and a beautiful tensile pavilion structure. Now this year in 2022, we're starting with phase two. And phase two is gonna bring us a renovated fishing dock and we're also putting in a canoe and kayak launch. We want our residents to be able to access Belva Lake safely. And this is a great place to put in and enjoy the lake. So Director Zangline actually acquired a $100,000 grant from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation to restore natural landscape areas, habitats, and remove invasive species at Briggs Park.
Another section of Iron Bell Trail is going to be built down here in River Drive, and it's going to be going right along one of our parks. On Martinsville Road, we have Riggs Park, and our future plans include building a trailhead for the Iron Bell right there on the north side of Riggs Park. Another capital improvement project that we will be doing in the fall of this year is replacing the two remaining pavilions at Van Buren Park to match pavilion number two that was installed in 2017. This will give a great fresh new look for our pavilions and we're really looking forward to renting them out to the public next year. So this year we finished our pickleball court project. We added four new pickleball courts, two full tennis courts, a new fence, a new parking lot, and we worked in partnership with the Waverly Apartments and the Van Buren Civic Fund donated the funds to do the shade structure. Our pickleballers love it over there. We started our community summer project prior to COVID, so we've been working on it for a long time. It's been a dream of everyone in the township to add this to our community. We should be breaking ground um, later this fall. We are so excited. We can't wait. So there's a ton of different spaces that the community can look forward to in the community center. There are fitness areas for group fitness, also individual exercise equipment areas, um, multi-purpose rooms that individuals can rent out. There's a team space, uh, elevated walking track, um, improved areas of the senior center, and just so much more. The new senior community center will attach to it with an outdoor concert venue that will back up almost to the ballpark area that will be removed. So you're going to have a venue where you have an outdoor concert, you have a splash pad, a kid's area for playing an outdoor play area. It'll have a refreshment stand, it'll change the rooms and bathrooms. This is going to be a wonderful day at outdoor events for Van Buren Cox residents. So also because of the community center construction, we were required to move our Forgotten Harvest mobile pantry. Um, and we're very grateful to be able to partner with Wayne County Community College, uh, the Ted Scott campus located in Van Buren. Um, and we plan to host the pantry there on the first and third Tuesdays of every month. We're going to take our money, Van Buren Township money, and we're going to invest in the best investment we can think of. And that is we're going to invest in Van Buren residents. But the sidewalk project is a project that's taking place in one of our older communities, which is Haggerty Subdivision. This project consists of about 46,000 square feet of sidewalk. The sidewalk is over 50 years old. It's going to beautify the community, so give kids a safe passage to and from school, so I'll give kids a way they can ride their bikes and not in the street. I think the residents of the community is very excited to see it finally come to life. And I think it's a good thing. We're not just trying to build walls for the residents. We're trying to build walls for the businesses also. Part of that is by building our infrastructure properly. Haggerty Road between E Course and Van Gogh Road is probably the best classic example of that. The Haggerty Road expansion is something that the township has recognized for several years as something uh, that needs to be done as soon as possible. Haggerty Road is a two way road. We know expansion is coming. We know we can't stop it. To bury our heads in the sand and not expand these roads now as they come up for development would be assuring that we would be stuck in gridlock for the next 20 years. We're going to plan for the future and take care of this now. We push forward with the plan alongside our partners in Wayne County and uh, with some of the businesses in that area to fully reconstruct the road from a two lane section to a three lane section with a left turn lane, as well as a traffic signal, which will help that area not only to grow in the future, but it's really just much needed to uh, make it a, a passable corridor today. So we're really excited to push that project forward. The local government here in the township heard each and every day for the residents of the township to ensure that they have quality services, they have a safe community, clean community. I am fortunate enough to live in the township. I love it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a great thing. We are continually striving to make this a place they want to come home to every night. They're proud to be here. 
And we also want them to look forward to all the exciting developments we have coming for them in the future. We've come a long way since 2016, and we didn't get here by accident. Everything we do is done with a standard of premier in mind. Safety, high-level services, first-class amenities. Ultimately, we're trying to give the community a sense of pride and confidence that together, together with the schools and together with the organizations and the businesses, the homeowners associations, that together Van Buren is building for a sustainable and a vibrant future. Uh, well, I'm not sure you're going to get a better take now. <laughs> yeah, but, um, my staff was to that. Yeah, it was that. Yeah, they might. Thank you very much, Supervisor. Lack of labor, we can have it. Wonder where he is. I was uh, back in the cave. Yeah, yeah. Um. And thank you to thank you, supervisor, and all the directors for all the uh, taking time out of their busy schedules uh, for the production of this video. And thank you, Dan Salmon, uh, for um, all his patience and hard work that helped forge this video. We've got a lot of good people. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, where to move forward? Does anybody else have any other presentations or announcements? No. Uh, moving on then to public comment. Does anybody have anything they want to make as a public comment for uh, today's business? Just a regular. Okay. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's see. We're moving on then to uh, other business. We have none new business. We're going to move up. Uh, we have a um, we have uh, number five. Which is a discussion I'm going to consider approval of accepting a land donation of a parcel of property located off Tyler Road from Mark and Jonathan Will Patton. And since they came out, I don't want to make them sit through the whole meeting, but I'd like to I'd like to say thank you for it. But we have to go through the motions of bringing this forward. Who would like to make that? Ms. Frazier? I make a motion we approve accepting the land donation of parcel. 83-04399-001-0001 commercial vacant property located off Tidal Road from Mark and Jonathan's land. All right, uh, Director, you want to talk about Sure, so I'll, I'll just uh, uh, briefly uh, introduce the item uh, as a uh, Trustee Fraser mentioned this uh, property is located off the Belleville Road. It's between Kirk, Kirkland and Parkwood uh, Parkwood Estate uh, apartment complex. It's about 12 and a half acres. It's a wooded property. It is level. It was considered to be, you know, might be used as a potential parkland in the future for other boards to decide. And the uh, recreational master plan, there was a reference to a need for more neighborhood parks. So, and then acquiring land uh, property for more residential near residential areas for neighborhood parks was mentioned in the master plan. So that might be something for future boards to decide. We do have with us uh, Mr. John LePanton, who is one of the owners who wanted to be able to address the board uh, on, on the donation. So he is here and I'll uh, give him some time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you for. Um, Resequencing for me, so I won't take up much of your time. No. Um, but uh, but but many thanks to Dan Selman. He was he was great to work with. Um, just want to offer some some quick history. So, uh, Lopate and Company is a family owned development firm. Uh, it was founded by my grandfather Lawrence Lopate. Um, so I'm third generation. Um, so uh, my grandfather sixty years ago was looking to develop a racetrack in, in Michigan. Um, so Van Buren Township was one of the, one of the finalists. Um, eventually he ended up developing what became Michigan International Speedway um, in the Irish Hills. Um, but the property that he acquired here, um, he, he knew that there was great development opportunity. So he held on to it. Um, at one point, the, the property was extended from 
um, Tyler all the way to uh, eCourse. Um, as as years went on, um, pieces of the property were broken off and and uh, developed. Um, my grandpa passed away uh, in 1993. Um, the, the the properties that he developed were residential. Um, with with my dad and myself, our development focus has been more commercial and and industrial. Um, so really, it just made sense um, with the with the piece that was left, this 12 and a half acres. Um, to to made more sense to to pass it on to you guys because we we had no uh, um, we had no no use for it. Um, so I reached out to Dan to, to this was a new thing for us to to donate property. Um, so I reached out to Dan and, and he kind of um, we we he held my hand through the process and uh, and just just wanted to say thank you. So. You know, I'm sure it'll be a lovely neighborhood park. It's not in our plan right now, but um, we're certainly not going to turn it down to this location. It's a beautiful piece. Yep. Anybody? Just like to thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. So much for a generous donation like that. It really uh, will enhance the township and do good for our residents and our kids. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Would you like to <laughs> shake your hand if you go by? Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I just, if not every day, somebody gives you 12 acres of yeah. land. Thank you so much. Man. And I think must, your grandfather must be an actual legend. I'm just trying to figure out why I know that name. MIS, no wonder. Yeah. You don't need to stick around too many hours in here. Thanks, John. I got a result of all the Okay. All right. Uh, first letter of order business is discussion on to consider approval, approval of Blake Worth Worthy's personal service agreement. Um, and asking you, a clerk, right, and myself to sign it. Can I get a motion? I'll make that motion to consider approval of Worthy's personal service agreement for the supervisor, that American clerk, right, to the agreement. Yeah, that's important. Okay. Uh, Director Sumter. Good evening, Board. Um, I bring to you tonight the personal service agreement for Blake Worthy. Um, this position for the um, desktop support technician was put on put in the budget last year. So it has been a moment since we have been in our search for that right person. Um, both Director Rankin and our network IT person, Brad Barbers, interviewed Blake, and they were very impressed with his credentials. I also need to give a notable um, mention of Blake's current supervisor, who reached out to him directly and told him about this position when he saw it. He thought so much of Blake and wanted him to be in a community that was growing and had such a great reputation that he told Blake about this position. And he wanted me to make sure I mentioned that to the board. You are getting a very astute, as he said, <laughs> employee. He's very um, personable, a little quiet. We'll have to work on that. Um, but he really just wanted you to know you're getting a good employee in Blake. So with that, I'll let um, Director Rankin say a few words. I, uh, Nicole pretty much said it all there, but I also want to mention Blake uh, attended high school, eCourse Community High School, uh, Diploma 2016. He was part of the National Honor Society and a top 10 graduate. Yeah. We're thrilled to have him. Before. And he's going to be working on the desktop. Yes. About, what about the, uh, the Wi Fi and stuff? He's going to have an opportunity to learn as much as he can. That we want a well rounded person. Uh, you know, it's a great opportunity and we're, we're happy to have him. Yeah. So, with that, I ask the board to approve Blake Worthy's personal service agreement and the execution by Supervisor McNamara and Clerk Wright. 
Any other questions? Hearing no further questions, I uh, move to by Trustee Miller, supported by Clerk Wright, to hire Mr. Worthy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Welcome. Come on up. Come on, you want a handshake? Well, we, well, we all like it. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have to consider discussion and consider approval of the title change to the job description of public safety, public, public safety administrative assistance to public safety administrator. And I get a motion. Mr. Chair. I make a motion to approve the title change to that description from public safety administrative assistant to public safety administrator. Of course, I have put right already down. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you did. Okay. Okay. So, continue. Good evening again, board. Um, I am here before you to consider the approval of this title change um, for the public safety administration, administrative assistant to the public safety administrator. This position was brought to you during this year's budget hearings and added to the wage schedule. This is the second step in the process. Police chief during that time gave you his reasons why he wanted to update the title to match the actual duties of Casey Schmidtke. Currently, she does a lot. She is the advisor. First, I wanna let you know that she really, when I say advisor, she's the advisor. She's my go-to. Not saying you're not the guy, but <laughs> I go to Casey for a lot of information. Um, she handles all things public safety, although we did do a split of the divisions. She still handles a lot of the fire invoices that comes through. So she does handle a lot with that. She handles um, or helps Dave out with his budget along with another person. But I want to truly say that this title change and the duties that are listed still don't cover the amount of duties that Casey actually does on a day-to-day -day, um, basis. And Jason wanted to say a few things as well to kind of back up the reason again why he wanted the position changed and more duties added for work. Thank you, board, uh, for seeing us tonight. Uh, if Casey has really changed how we do our business in police and fire, um, she does a lot of strategic planning for both myself and the fire chief and our deputy chief. Um, she does a tremendous amount of research. She's the gatekeeper of public safety so that the fire chief can go do fire chief stuff and I can do police chief stuff. She runs, she's basically our office manager and she's she handles everything for us so that we can focus on accreditation, we can focus on our training, we can focus on making sure that we're doing things the way we should be doing. So I just wanted to say she's very, uh, she's incredible to work with and we're very lucky to have her. I'm, I'm really happy that I, I mean, we discussed how the police and fire run. They run with you know, these three days on, four days off, and they've got so many, you know, PTO days. And it gets so confusing to try and do budgets with that group that, uh, I mean, I literally have to have Casey do shift by shift monthly budget training just to make sure that we can hold budget. And to that put a shift by shift budget on the back of the police chief or deputy chief or fire chief. Um, I'm just very thankful Casey Sarah. She's really, she really had to step up for us. And the last thing I'll add with that is no matter what you ask Casey, she never complains. She does it with a smile all the time. Stuff. So she is an asset to the township. Is she here or you got she her? She is here. Yeah, she's here. We got her. <laughs> Come on up, Casey. Yeah. Let me just let me say, um, Casey does a lot of coordination with the clerk's office. And, um, and Jason can admit that 
over the last five or six years, we've been talking a lot about uh, recording and and throwing out incident reports and and uh, getting the uh, the department in, in place where we can be the credit receive the accreditation that you achieved not only achieve accreditation but cut back on expenses and what you did out the board so I mean we got a significant uh, reimbursement this year from them environment which pretty much paid for our yearly um insurance and with that uh you guys don't know so I guess it's a good time to tell the rest of the board this year we got the biggest amount we ever got assets uh, distribution from them environment which every year uh, MMRMA sends out a asset distribution to municipalities and cities based on their incident, their rating, and uh, uh, basically they report from incidents and how you stand in, uh, in compliance. Um, we received $324,000 back. I think our yearly amount is for $457,000, I think, which almost negates the yearly amount. Uh, that's the most I've been 12 or 14 years the most we ever received. And it's based uh, I sit on them on my board, so it's based on reporting lack of incidents, incident incidents, which means nobody here to hop in the role, you know, that kind of stuff. And Casey reports, she makes sure that the, the uh, reporting is, is reported correctly, which is something that I would had a lot of issues with prior. If it's reported correctly, then MMRA they can do their job and, and put it in the right place and make sure that they don't debit that against you. So kudos, Katie, Thank you. doing a great job. I was wondering who turned the department around. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I can't take credit for that. I and I, she was the one who failed. Yes, I do. And the council failed. I wanted to let us know that. We appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank you. And the show is a really great job. Thanks. Later this year, you'll get our PSA, but not today. Although <laughs> we had a, um, we had one grant, and they submitted the grant to me for three hundred sixty thousand dollars to commit to the state. And I sat down with Casey, and I went back over it and redid it. And went to like nine hundred sixty thousand. <laughs> oh yeah, some very good reports. <laughs> Well, she has worked her, uh, her, you know. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, we're very happy that we created this Anybody else? Okay, so we're creating the position, and we have a motion by Treasurer Bud, supported by Clerk Wright. Hearing no for the discussion. All in favor? I oppose. This motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you, board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Thanks. All right. Um, number three. Okay, number three. Discussion now. Are we in the first ordinance? Um, first, you want to do this one or no? So we read it. Number three. Okay. To consider approval of the first reading of ordinance 10 18 22 to rezone 1166 Compton Road from C, local business district to Compton Road, mixed use district. All right, director. Okay, good evening, board. Thank you for uh, entertaining this item tonight. Uh, this was a rezoning request, um, an application that was made by uh, Mr. William Ellis and Jim Mitty of EHM Properties. Uh, as mentioned, this is a, a rezoning ordinance that you're being requested to pass a first reading on. Um, the request is to rezone from C local commercial to uh, SRMU, which is the new Sumter Road mixed use district that the board actually just adopted recently. Um, a little bit of background of this site. I don't have any visual aids tonight, but you do have uh, some images in your packet. The subject site is a, a roughly quarter acre lot at the northwest corner of Cheney, Cheney Avenue and Sumter Road. It uh, contains a 922 square foot building that was built in 1930. 
uh, and the parcel zoning has been C for as long as we can find in our records. There was a, a zoning map from 1974 that shows it was uh, commercially zoned back then. Um, the, pro the property had a number of uses over the years. It uh, had been a, a small insurance office after being a residential dwelling for many years. It became an insurance office in the mid 2000s. And that's important because when that happened, uh, the building's residential use went away and the building was confined to the commercial uh, zoning district that, that the site sits in. So it couldn't go back to residential. Um, so this is a good case example of how the newly adopted Sumter Road mixed use districts can help um, free up some of the properties in that area for a variety of new uses. Um, the owner's intent is to allow this property to be uh, sold as a residential property as it's already been improved uh, with some, some site improvements to facilitate residential use in recent years. Um, and so this is uh, with the new Sumter Road mixed use district, this being a parcel that's that's considered a uh, shallow frontage lot within that uh, district, it will be able to be used as a single family residence. And then it can be uh, converted for a variety of small business uses if that's what um, the owner in the future desires. Uh, some of those uses may warrant site plan review by the planning commission and maybe even another review by the board. But uh, for right now, as a residential use under this zoning, this would be the last approval that they would need to um, gain to be able to sell the property and, and uh, have it be used as a home. Uh, I'll just really broadly say that the planning commission uh, met on September 28th. They held a public hearing for this use. And uh, they found that the, the new zoning district will serve the property well, um, that the residential use will be well served by the utilities and uh, including water and sewer and the road network in the area. Uh, and that uh, the mixed use will be consistent with the newly adopted 2022 master plan for Sumter Road. And uh, that the residential use would be a good use for the site. So um, I, with no further questions, uh, I just recommend that you adopt the first reading of the ordinance or pass the first reading of the ordinance. Um, but if you have any questions, I'm glad to answer them. No, we, we did the Sumter Road plan so that people can actually start using their properties for what they intended. And I love it. The love that's coming through this quick. Was he waiting in line for this? Because this is fast. There was, it, he was recently, he, he had marketed the property for some potential commercial uses that didn't work out. But in, in recent months, he's been hoping for this to happen. So he's excited. Good job. Can you just see the chair, just to say too, that the residents in the area were very happy with what he's done with it, as far as just being up, but someone now can live in it. And then there's a big thank you to Dan and any folks that worked through this whole redistricting that area so that we can have the next use of it. So this can be used the way the folks in the area would like to see it used. Thank you. Thank you. We've got about 30 more to go on that. <laughs> That's right. That's a good start. Um, any questions? This is the first reading, so it's not a roll call, correct? Right. Okay. So here are no further questions. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This motion passes and goes to the second reading next time we move. Thank you, Director. Thank you. We are now over to number four, discussion on Mr. Point. Do you want to read this one? I move that we consider approval of the purchase of an F-154, F-154 water and sewer department fleet in the amount of $39,265. Good point. Okay. All right, uh, Director. Uh, good evening, board. Um, recommendation to purchase a 2022 Super Cab F-150 truck for $39,265. It's going to come out of the water and sewer. Uh, it's going to come out of the water and sewer capital overlay fund. Um, this vehicle was originally slated to come out for the 20 and 23 budget, but due to the shortage of vehicles that we're having, I'm making a recommendation that we purchase this in the 2022 budget. It's going to be shared uh, in the water and sewer fleet. We, we just bought one recently, right? Yes, we did. Okay, so 
I have good news. This uh, we approved the last one at forty five thousand. Forty thousand five hundred dollars. Forty. $40,500. The last one? Yes. Because they lowered the price after we did it. Correct. Okay, so Ford honored some of the uh, pricing that they, they went back on. And Craig Ashton called me and said that he could get us that discount back down. So it's like 45000 You guys approved it for. We moved it down. We got it. We Craig got it down to 40500 Correct. And that's what he charged us. So this is also obviously in the state of Michigan pricing is down less than the other one. Twelve hundred dollars less. So we're back on the minimum again. State of Michigan per person. So this is a good deal. Yes. Okay. Uh, any questions? No, I, I just like to say I'm glad that uh, we're giving it to our local uh car dealer Atkinson, yes and uh that we're supporting their business because they always do a good job of servicing our vehicles and supporting our efforts for the county yeah well, okay. go ahead say it but Atkinson do a great job of the township i was in support if you're listening, Craig, I just like you to get you to sell it in the damn damn township. Craig writes out, Craig writes, quite frankly, yeah. Hatchins is a damn beer. Yeah, we say Hatchins is a bell bell. <laughs> All right. But we love it. I love it too. All right. We have a motion. Do we have any, anything else? I have a motion by Trustee Boynton, supported by Trustee Frazier. Hearing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. We now move to reports, which we have none, and we move into public comment. Yep, just a couple things. Um, it's really no better at the airport. The only thing that's going to fix that is a temporary road or some type of calcium chloride. And I'm going to request again that somebody does some air sampling down there. It's it's unbelievable. The water is not working. By the time they get to the end of the trail, it's already dry again. It's just not going to work. So they're going to continue to play with that dirt. They've hauled dirt there. Now they're hauling it back over there. Then they've hauled other dirt, and now they're they're just hauling it back and forth. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, they're probably just wasting money. They got to spend it on moving dirt. But I, I'm at wit's end. I'm ready to call EPA. I'm asking that the township do something about it. It's terrible. And the reason uh, no one complains from Denton so is uh, they've been complaining about the trucks. A lot of them trucks that are going there and they're speeding through there. And I've talked to a few of the people and they say, well, we can't even get them to stop the trucks from speeding, let alone the dust. So uh, Leon, uh, Premier Community has the proper flags on election day in the proper precincts. So if you're going to call us a Premier Community, let's get with the program. We will have the flag. I'm going to be checking, and I ain't going to be nice next time. Good. I doubt that, but uh, the other thing is uh, I'm, uh, I understand we're going to be getting a resource officer. Um, we're in negotiations. We're, well, we're going to get one because you guys got money for signs, tents, everything. Don't say you don't have money for a resource officer. Matter of fact, I really, you know, Velva only has one and she's been there 20 years. So it's about, which is about 15, 17 years too long. You're supposed to switch them out every few years. So it would be great if uh, Van Buren, I don't know how much it costs to train a resource officer. Do you have an idea? If, 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 if we're sending a resource officer right I mean, three full-time electeds have just signed an out of state mm -hmm. travel voucher for a school resource officer to leave the state to go get trained and what's the cost on that yes, I don't know. four five not that 
expensive. Right. Not that not that expensive. I, I would highly recommend that we train a second officer. What happens is something happens with the first officer, his wife has a baby or or he gets a better job somewhere. There's, there's, there's more to just say you're having school resource officers. I understand that. You have to come to an agreement with the schools, which we're yeah. working for that. Yeah. Well, I'm working with the schools and too the on schools, it. The public resource officer will remain with the schools. Officer. Right, right. But she's due to retire at any time. I mean, she can't work forever, for God's sakes. And they're supposed to switch them out every few years. What happens is... Big pardon? Right, right. The, oh, they definitely they need more than two. They need more than two, but two's a start. Um, and so what if something happens with our resource officer and we don't have anyone to replace him, or if he takes a day off? It's important that that if we have a resource officer that he's there when he's supposed to be there, if he's supposed to be there five days a week, and if he's not able to be there, we should have someone in his place. And well, I, no, I'm telling you. So just listen to what I'm saying. We need to train too. Because what if the officer we train gets a better opportunity somewhere and leaves, and then while we're back to square eight, we got to. Well, but what we should have two, what I'm saying, we should have a backup. We got two supervisors, we got a deputy supervisor and a supervisor, right? which we don't need to well so you could maybe get rid of the deputy supervisor and hire a second resource officer if you need to find out where the money could come from i'm just saying we we need a backup plan let's not just have one and then so oh, he broke his leg you know. well okay well i'm just saying we have money for everything you got look at look at this place you got money for everything don't say you don't have money for a resource officer because you got money for everything else. The Enduron Township is not going to be a premier community unless the schools come with it. Right, that's right. And if they're and if we can't keep them safe, ain't nobody going to want to come here. And there's problems at that school. That that they need cops up there. Don't let them kid you. It's not all top score. The the SAT scores are down, but the football scores are up. But the SAT scores are way down. So right here, Pete, we're already sending our, we're already scheduling our guys. Right. right. Well, look at sending the second one. Uh, is there anybody else from the public that wants to speak? Uh, no public comment from our public participation. Okay. Okay. My question is, if we get this resource officer, when would they uh, be put into play? And going back to Wendy's position, if someone's sick or has to have time off, what do we do there? Now I've got someone on duty, that's the day something will happen. Right. Go ahead, you want to answer that? Sure. Good evening, Lord. Um, the the idea of the school resource officer to work in collaboration with Belleville's school resource officer. That resource officer will bring that training back. It's, it's like a train the trainer. Um, we're also we also have plans in the works to partner with Growth Works to offer more resources not only to school administrators, teachers, but to parents and the children as well. Um, and we want to get into the elementary schools, the junior high. Uh, we want to get into Owen and McBride and get with these kids earlier to identify any issues that may be bubbling just under the surface and address them and give these kids and their parents the resources before they actually get to high school. So that's the idea behind our school resource program uh, and the SRO. And the SRO will be bringing that training back to the department to train other officers. You know, oh, go ahead. Is that correct? Correct. I, so there, there'll be training on mental health Correct. They will be addressing some of the issues that don't rise to serious crimes, but may if they're not addressed at a later time. Yeah. And I'll be bringing a, um, um, a board action to you at a later date with World Works as well. And, you know, going into a little bit of greater detail as to what this is going to involve. But it is more of a holistic program involving the entire school district. 
working collaboration with the bubble officer and also addressing some of the issues at the elementary schools and junior high. That's what the community needs. That's why I've been hearing from residents is where is the mental health part of this um, this piece? Yes, so, it, it's greatly needed. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. I think that what always made the DR program so good when we had that for a good many years. I think that mm -hmm. was the initial thing that got public safety into the elementary schools and the program that they they ran there because you know the kids always spoke so highly of that and did their parents and then unfortunately that for some reason that program was no longer gone up and then we did have the two resource officers and funding became a problem and and i think we all know that um it, things are different out there and this is going to be invaluable and i know the officer that's going there was he in it's a program that he loves, so he definitely is going to be valued in that position. Yes, he's he's very passionate about about um, getting back into this again, and you know, partnering with Growth Works to provide these resources. What is the status of our grants? So, so the grant, the grant that is out there through the state, the school has to go after. We can't. It's a, it's a help. It helps with funding, but we can't write it. They have to write it. So we've been working with uh, the superintendent and providing direction on that grant, and they're apparently working on it. There's money. There's money. I hate to see it dependent on a grant. It's going to happen anyway. We won't the right. That's well, we always try and get the grant. <laughs> but it doesn't, it's not stemmed on if we don't get the grant, then no. this isn't going to happen. No, no, no it's not. If you notice, it was in the budget when we adapted the budget. It is in well, the we need to let the residents know that it is in the budget, right? It's not there's, contingent there's, upon there's some we get millions of dollars in the budget. Right. We intend on doing it, but we're still going after a grant. And no, we get half of them, and that's why we run surpluses almost every year. Um, we get a lot of all numbers. Great explanation. Thank you. For Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? No. All right, let's call for our journey. I make a motion to All in favor? Opposed? Uh, we are adjourned. Yeah, I have a triple more I can do on that.